VIP Access VIP Access with Aniko and Africa Loud. Hello and welcome to VIP Access. This is the third season of my podcast, VIP Access. This show has been in existence on YouTube from 2018. The companion podcast was birthed in 2021 and now we're rolling and not going to stop. I'm in Jersey and really amazed to be meeting this amazing artist sitting right next to me. He's a legend when it comes to vendor folk music. He's also an amazing songwriter, producer, composer, and all-round storyteller. He's talking about his grandmother in his most recent album, and we want to go deep into that. Welcome, Munye. Hello, thank you for having me. Oh, it's so great to have you. How are you? I'm well, how are you? I'm good, thank you. You know, when I first listened to your music and heard the, the language, I was like, this is not Zulu. Because from outside South Africa, we're so used to listening to Zulu, or it's something we can recognize easily. But when I had the vendor, it sounded to me a little bit like Shona. I don't know if I'm, I'm right that there's a similarity. So tell me about your language and your choice to sing in it. So I sing in Chivenda, which is the language that I obviously speak. And the interesting fact about that is that the, we're a minority in, in, in the country, I guess, like generally in Southern Africa, I think in South Africa, there's roughly between three to five million speakers. Mm -hmm. And we're all sort of like based, based in the northern side of, of South Africa. Mm -hmm. So there's lack of representation and media pretty much everywhere. So initially when I was starting to write, I was, you know, I was actually just thinking I'm writing for my grandmother. So let me write in a language that she understands mm -hmm. since she didn't get to go to school or speak mm -hmm. any other language. And, you know, while studying as well, you know, I realized that like just language preservation is an important part of my, 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 my journey and my work. And I wanted to be intentional with that. So what I did while I was writing in that language and part of the choices I made was I wrote in a very specific dialect that's not sort of watered down. Mm -hmm. So because my Granger didn't go to school she speaks like this old dialect you know she's born in the 30s it's not filtered you know there's no like like there's no English words in between mm -hmm. so yeah that's sort of why I sing in in Intervenda you know just to amplify the language and also just so that my grandmother can enjoy my art wow 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 oh my goodness so amazing and how was the record you know received across the the, the, the country and the continent who it was very well received, funny enough. I think, you know, I expected to make one of those albums that are for you and your 13 people, you know, your little cult following. Yeah. But funny enough, the response was so beautiful in that people would just say, hey, we don't know what you're saying, but we really relate to the emotion. And then by the time I would explain, if I'm at a show and I'm playing and I say, oh, this song is about this, people will usually just say, oh, I figured, you know, that sort of the emotion I felt. Mm -hmm. It was received really well. And it's been just so beautiful, you know, watching the the the, the, the music become part of people's lives and just sort of like you know have people have their own meaning while i have my own meaning like it's been it's been so amazing yeah for me the lesson i'm i'm, I'm already taking from this is, is, is not sometimes but i think at the end it always pays to be you and to be authentic you might think like no one is going to understand but if you're true to yourself someone is going to understand and you might maybe more people will understand um and so moving forward this is you you know you're going to continue singing in venda and folk or do you want to experiment and do other kind of you know languages and sounds how far do you want to stretch this authenticity side that you you know up uphold uh, well, funny you should ask that because my latest project that is out is, you know, has some English in it and it's called um, For the Boys I Like. So, yeah. Well, who are the boys you like? Hmm. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if we have time to mention everyone. <laughs> this is VIP access. So if there's oh. that one boy. You know yourself. <laughs> <laughs> Monye, I love you so much. I love you so much. So I want to talk to you about uh, Makulu. The project that you, you know, that you made as an ode to your grandma. Um, what are the, are the other songs, you know, talking about or are individual songs actually speaking about different topics to her? And uh, when you, you know, say it's an ode to your grandma, you know, despite the fact that um, the record sings in Venda, which you would understand, are there specific songs that you wrote for her and told her specific messages? I think I just want to go into the theme of the album, the exact messages that you're trying to, you know, share in the different stories. It's one long story, I'd like to say. So, you know, the sort of the, the sub theme for the album was lessons in loss, love and healing. Mm -hmm. You know, just looking at my grandmother's life, but like 
through my lens as well. Mm-hmm. So the first song is called Makuru, like the title track. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's about like all the lessons that she taught me not growing up. Oh, don't do this, do that, go to school. And, you know, the bridge part just says, you know, it's me saying, like reflecting on what she's told me and me just saying, listen to your elders because they know more. Mm-hmm. And the second song is, is is about what not to do. You know, and my grandmother has this thing where she she gives people excuses for their, for their actions, you know, like... Okay. The friends I grew up with, you know, there's always a mischievous person. She would just say, oh, no, this is, there's a Chivenda saying that says, Beboyosha Shata, which means that, like, you can't help it. Something must have gone genetically wrong because we've raised you right. We've done everything. So it goes from me, like all these lessons, and it goes also to a heartbreak, you know, um, where we speak about the things that really break my grandmother's heart. Like when we all had to leave the house, I went to study. My aunt moved out to go live somewhere else. Like it was just her. And there's a song called Burudu, which means loneliness. And I would speak to her on the phone and she would describe this loneliness like as a friend, not as a thing. She would, really? That's deep. Yeah. So it would just be a thing of, and it's just me and loneliness in this house, you know, like that's that's my only companion. And then straight after that, we also have a song where I featured like an amazing artist, Zoe Mudicha, where I felt like I couldn't fully comprehend or be able to explain, you know, my grandmother's pain and healing as a woman, you know, and I thought like another feminine body would be able to hold that space. Mm-hmm. And this song just speaks about um, like that, you know, help is co- has come, um, there's no more crying, be still my heart, be still my soul. Mm-hmm. And that speaks really to the essence of my grandmother in her old age where she's, you know, she's constantly just like reflecting on life and saying, my life might not have been the best one, but I have, I have so much peace. And And then there's also songs about like, love you know i try to imagine like love falling in love as me but like what would that have looked like if i'd lived in that time but like because i know this person and i know the stories they tell i could paint a picture using their context and you know and as the album finishes just before just before the the healing song Bizo, which i've mentioned there's a part where she there's a snippet of her singing where she's saying my heart is sore my heart is sore um and i close off the album with a song called Mvura, which means rain mm-hmm. Um, only because my grandmother only rested when it rained, you know, like otherwise it were working, even as she'd be in the garden do this. And then when, when it would rain, you know, she'd boil some peanuts and would just rest. And for me, it's also just a metaphor that, you know, rain for her, maybe, maybe the fact that her knees don't work so well, so she can't do much. Mm-hmm. And I always say people always think it's dark, but also I think rain also means that one day when she's not there, you know, that then she would have rested because I think she's had such a full life of beautiful moments and hurtful ones but yeah and i've sort of encompassed you know all these lessons in loss in love and in healing in this <laughs> what an artist you are Monye. <laughs> thank you <laughs> my goodness you just took me through this beautiful journey you know kind of like um i don't know like a journey where you were painting the pictures and i could hear the poetry and i could meet this grandmother and listen to her and see her working you just really have a way with you know how you just put out your art and words is so powerful Wow. And your music also gives me a really good vibe in terms of live music performance. You must be an amazing live music performer. And they, and they, it must be a really great like um, representation of your music when you're actually performing it live. So tell me about the interpreting the recorded music into live. Funny, again, like because I, I, I had to fundraise for the album, I started by playing the music live before I even had the album out. Which became so tricky, you know, because sometimes what you sing on stage and what can be recorded in studio, yes. I never like no. that. Yeah. But for me, the stories are like human beings, you know, they're like us, they are stories, so they, they have our identity. And sometimes when I sing Makuru, everyone dances and we're all celebrating all these lessons. And sometimes we all just sit there and reflect. Mm. And my performance style is just being honest about where I am at that moment mm. and also just easing into the energy like i always tell my 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 music director that you know we must have a, a set that's malleable we mm. can't just have a rigid we start here we finish here you know we're not we're not i always tell people we're not pop stars and we love pop stars listen we love britney spears <laughs> you know give it to me one more time you know lights out lights off but i always love to get on stage and just take the energy in mm. and then maybe i'll nudge at the music director that hey maybe let's song let's start with song number three because 
that's the energy that's in the room mm. or sometimes it's the complete opposite you walk into a space and you can tell the the energy is not the type of energy you want to sustain then we say okay let's do this and maybe bring the energy up mm. let's bring the energy down but for me it's just about honoring the work you know songs songs have healed and as an african you know we've carried our history and 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 uh, and our stories th um, through song and our mm. traditions and culture and healing and I, I don't take it lightly uh, but at the same time i also think nothing is that serious you know we can all just sit there around the fire and mm. listen to the songs and it could mean to you what it means to you mm. or it can soothe you or you can be entertained or bored mm. you're allowed to feel anything mm. that's how i approach it okay. yeah. and in your uh, you know opinion expert opinion you know what are the five tips you would give to artists who um are trying to create a record and incorporate you know traditional languages in it what's the tip what's the five tips you'd give them i think tip number one conviction you know like what are you convicted about what do you believe in like what what's your thing and secondly your story like what 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 are you trying to tell mm -hmm. and i think the third thing is are you prepared to tell that story and own it because once you record that thing in the digital age whether you post and delete it's someone has has it saved somewhere is it a story you're willing to live with and f my the fourth thing is also just technical preparedness like mm. are you can can you own it you know are you, are you prepared enough as a singer maybe as a musician are you practicing and also the fifth thing is just be be okay with letting go once mm. once you put once you put the art out it's not you can't control the narrative Monet, I want to talk a little bit more about your latest project, Boys I Like, that is already out there. I love the project, really the different vibes, but still I see the Monet in it. Um, tell me about the choice of collaborators in this project. Take me through um, individual songs and how it is, how is it doing so far? It's so funny. I keep saying that because Vele, everything is funny to me. <laughs> <laughs> um, it, the collaborators are well def i think most of the collaborators are the people i like mm -hmm. not necessarily the people who sang like in the in the in in, in what people are listening to mm -hmm. but just the music is all inspired by real life people mm -hmm. and real life instances that are sort of interconnected in a way mm -hmm. so for example um the single that came out um a few months ago which was leading up to the ep drop uh called mm -hmm. nianifuna um i wrote with with this amazing musician called Mm. and how we wrote the song that was me just saying i really like you um the lyrics literally say that like i like you but i don't want to say it in a language you understand mm. you know and then he responded by you know singing in a different language saying you know what you might be singing in a different language but i understand and i like you too it was yeah. like such a beautiful sweet romantic moment yeah. and you know there's like a song like um uncertain where i think that song was like the the arc of the story where like the collaborator is someone who's in my life that i love so dearly but mm -hmm. at the time he was going through something and he wasn't communicating and i wasn't sure what was going on and i was for the first time feeling uncertain about something i had never felt uncertain about mm -hmm. so but but like the uncertainty i also want i also wanted the sonic to sort of shock me as well mm -hmm. so if you've like if you've heard it's very like rocky it's got this hectic punk rock approach to it mm -hmm. and also just to share the frustration and then the other song you know i have to remember my own songs like i don't <laughs> <laughs> you're, not, you're not the first like i interviewed bonge in the first um episode of this podcast and i was explaining to her like oh there's a song of yours i like and i was humming the melody and she's like which song i had to actually play it for her and she's like I was like you have too many songs <laughs> <laughs> yeah i mean there's forget. right we, we tend to forget there's a song called my p which means words which is like my heartbreak mm -hmm. song i wrote it the morning of my heartbreak before the heartbreak happened mm -hmm. like sometimes you just know and i collaborated with amazing people mm -hmm. like you've heard tandin is on the song mm -hmm. and i think you know for you would have, you you would think that like i would have probably just thought oh my gosh tandy let's make an amazing jazz record you know this stuff but part of the choices like i said i made with this with this very specific body of work was to try show people how different i am mm -hmm. but also while also just sharing like these these very raw 
feelings about about myself because people know me as the wholesome guy who sings about his grandmother and that's cute but I'm, i also fall in love so <laughs> you know hence for the boys i like yeah where do you get this um, confidence to express yourself? I, I, I'm in awe of it. You know, it's beautiful. I love it. Um, I don't know. I, I, I'm not scared of my feelings. I'm more scared of not feeling than I am of feeling. And I, I feel a lot and I express my feelings a lot because I don't want to go home and think, should I have said that? You know, I'd rather say stuff and think, maybe I could have said it differently, but I didn't. Maybe that was my reflex at the time. Mm. Um, I don't think generally out in the world I'm a, I'm a super confident person. Not that I'm, you know, I'm timid or anything, but I don't think I'm the life of the party. But I think when it comes to expressing my feelings, especially through art. I think and that's exactly what I, what I, I see. I'm like, this, you might not be the most confident to everyone in every situation, but in terms of expressing your feelings, you're a king. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. I, and also... I, I think I exist like that. You know, I, I, I can't help but just be like that. I think I exist like that also just for, for other people like me. Mm. I think a lot of, I think a lot of, a lot of artists that, as even like in Jobek, the artist whose music I love, which is colorful and heavily expressive. Like when I meet them in person, I'm like, I see why. Like a lot is happening in your head. Mm. You know, the chaos you can hear, but the person is just sometimes very just relaxed. Um, so, so yeah, this is for all the, the soft, super expressive kids. Yes, yes, yes. What kind of music are you listening to, you know, that you like and who are these artists who you, you love to listen to? Funny. I don't listen to a lot of music. Um, I don't think it's, ha! I swear, I don't think it's my first, it's my first love in terms of art to consume. Jesus. Well, it does because this is this is a reality. So it does make sense that it's a reality. But what is what's what what are you consuming then? Visual art. Like I have more painter friends than musician friends. But I mean, I do have music that I listen to. It's mostly just sad white girls. <laughs> <laughs> Lizzie McAlpine. I think that's how I'm saying her name. Um, Billian, you know, like just stay with their guitars. Like, oh, why did you leave me? I'm like, I get it. Says, why did he leave you? And I also love, I, I, I love, 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 love African music mm. as an African person. So when I'm not listening to my sad white girls, you know, I'm listening to Ndabo Zulu, Zoe Mutika, listening to Bonge as well, you know, the Zulu, you know, in there. Um, listening to Thesis, love them so much. Listening to Msaki, listening to King Ta, you know, um, a whole variety of music. Um, it, 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 like it's not a lot, but I have my my little. Mm nine albums that mm. I constantly play and with the jazz, with, with, with the jazz ones, like mm. I've gotten to a point where I know all the solos and I, I sing along, mm. but I'm not a new music Friday type person where mm. I, I don't know what's out there. I don't know what came out this past Friday. I don't know what's coming out next Friday. <laughs> and sometimes it's ignorance, but hey, tough. Ignorance is bliss. It's blissful ignorance. You choose to Listen to your own music that you curate, right? Yes, definitely. <laughs> okay, so, um, geez, I had a question and then it just went out of my head. What did I want to ask you? Oh, yeah, I wanted to ask about, you know, this beautiful um, career that you have, you know, going, beautiful music you're writing um, and interpreting into live performances. Have you had a chance to perform um, in, you know, other parts of the continent or beyond and... Are there plans to, you know, bring yourself to, you know, the rest of Africa, maybe East Africa for my, to my country in Kenya? You know, we really love um, live music. You know, South African music is um, dope music. And we, we just love great performers. So I'm very curious to know if, you know, we could get you sometime or what's the plan, um, you know, to spread your wings further. I, I love, I love performing like I mean, I think everyone knows that, and I haven't really had a chance to play outside of the country much. I have done a few of my shows in the previous year. In I think I did two shows when I was in Moz in Maputo, mm -hmm. and that was great. And I'm constantly like just looking forward to playing in other places, um, be it in Swaziland. I mean, I would love, love, love to come to Nairobi. 
you know, or go play in Lamu. There's a, there's a, she's not really a friend, like an internet buddy who does his writing retreats. And every year I'm always like, hey, who's playing this year at your thing? But yeah, I would love to play in the rest of the continent. Firstly, even, you know, I know I think a lot of artists on the continent, you know, won the European dream. You know, we all want euros, you know, they're probably stronger than our African yeah. currencies. But I would love, love, love to come play in Nairobi. That's amazing. That It's so nice to say the say no more. After this, we have to talk to Jess and a cum agency. Right. They got to make they this must, happen. They must, they must make Jess, happen. if you're watching. <laughs> hey, <laughs> I would love, love, love. Yeah. Oh, cool. And um, I think one important thing that I, I, I did not ask you yet, and I would like to ask you before we wrap up the interview, is just um, how you grew up. So where did you grow up? Um, and I think I have, if I read correctly, you grew up, you know, with your grandmother, very present, you know, teaching you a lot of life lessons. So I would love for you to take me back to, you know, the background of growing up, your inspirations. And I think that is what shaped, you know, the person who we're seeing today, the person who's unapologetic about expressing himself and um, unapologetic about f feeling what he's feeling and sharing his feelings. So tell me about, you know, the context. I grew up in a small village called Chilapene, uh, which is maybe 20 kilometers outside of Toyendo, which is a small town in Limpopo. The capital city is Pulukwane just like giving you geographical context. And Bulukwane is roughly 250 kilometers from Johannesburg. And Venda is double the, the distance away. And I grew up in this very beautiful small village with my grandmother. And she maybe overly babied me. You know, she didn't want me to go to preschool. She would rather take me to the orchard. And I had a really simple upbringing, you know. Um, and part of that is, you know, we grew up in this little house that had no electricity, no running water. Like I'd go fetch water, I uh, would use lamp. And only by the time I was a teenager, that's when we had power. I think that also informs the whole me not listening to music because, you know, I didn't really have like a record player or, yeah. um, but I was raised by my grandmother until I was 18. Yeah. Cause my mom had when she was young, so she had to go, school, yeah, she had to go to school, get her life. Um, so when I was 18, I went to study. And then I studied around Venda. And then when I was 19, I moved to the city. Mm. Um, and I took a gap year. Then I studied. But yeah, my, my childhood was just mostly me and my grandmother. Mm. You know, there were other people in the house. But, you know, I mean, some people were younger than me. There was also my aunt. Mm. But it was just mostly my, like my grandmother just sort of, you know, shaping this human being. Yeah. And did you have a chance to also connect with your mother, you know, later in life, is she proud of you? Um, does she listen to your music? What does she think about, you know, her son now? <laughs> she really is. I don't think she fully gets it. I think, <laughs> and not and like- But grandmother gets it. Yeah, yeah, my grandmother has always been like, hey, you do what you love, but please explain, you know? Explain not so that you can con convince me, but explain so I understand, because I don't know. So she'd always say, okay, you dropped out. What does that mean? And I say, it means I won't be finishing my university studies. Then she would say, does that mean you don't ever want to study? Then I said, no, I'm just going to take a year break. Then I'm going to go study something else. And it's like, oh, I understand. Mm -hmm. Whereas with my mom, because she's young also, she's just like, are you sure you want to do this? Don't you want to do something else? Love the song, by the way. But are you sure? You know, but I think she's gotten to a point where now she, she, she respects my decisions as a grown up. And there's never really been any resistance. And, you know, occasionally I'll open WhatsApp and I'll see a screen grab of her playing, playing my song. Mm. So, yeah, yeah. I mean, we, we I'm much closer to my grandmother. My, my mother feels like my older sibling, mm. you know, <laughs> so we do catch up. But, you know, like I, if something's happening, my speed dial is my grandmother. Like, mm. hey, this is what happened. But yeah. We, we connect and she, she loves the music as well. And, and what's the music scene like, you know, in South Africa? Because a, a lot is happening, you know, in Josie, in Cape Town, in Durban. You know, are you getting to play around? Are you happy with the opportunities presented to you as an artist and to other artists in the industry? What's the word on the ground? You know, are artists happy with the industry as it is now? Or what else needs to be done um, or undone? <laughs> I don't like this industry and I'm not ashamed to say it. Yeah, I mean, I exist in it, but I think it's such a terrible space to exist in because there's very little quality control, unfortunately. Um, I think. What, what do you mean by little quality control? Like there's a lot of 
um, you know, music and artists getting out and blowing up and not having great music or by by quality control? What do you mean? It's so tricky. It's so tricky to to answer because you know I respect all art yeah. and I think all art has a place in the world, but I also think there's certain spaces that like for me quality control means. If we're saying this is a jazz festival, then can we at least get actual like people who who do that mm -hmm. and whose work we see as that? Mm -hmm. Whereas I think I always saw people that like we live in like a TikTok era that where even like a jazz promoter will book someone who's not necessarily a jazz musician just because you know they will run the sales. And I guess sure commerce is great, but I also believe that like if if you really put together a great lineup of people who do what they do well and you curate it well, mm -hmm. those people who enjoy that will come for that. So specifically in Joburg, you know, like you'll go to a show and there'll be amazing acts. And then there'll also be like a random act, like a random, very popular person act where you're like, mm, I don't know, man, maybe just put out hits and play them on radio. No, no shade. Um, but it's also something that's very close to my heart because what for me i'm concerned about like 20 years from now when we look back you know what are we gonna what are we gonna see because mm -hmm. i mean i think it's a global problem also because if you look at if you look well I'm, I'm a 90s baby so like the songs i was listening to like on radio even just like on radio as a late teen you know maybe like in varsity I think they were very good songs and like if they are played now like they have replay value mm -hmm. whereas like i feel like a lot of the music that i hear now like on the main platform there's no replay value like it's a hit for three weeks and mm -hmm. maybe there's nothing wrong with that but it really affects people who who put time into doing what they're doing but not because they're trying to make a radio hit that's going to pass three weeks by but like they're trying to make something that really matters and like again you know music for me is not just for entertainment you know it's about reflecting the times like what's happening it's about you know like raising awareness around certain issues but if there is no quality control of the output and directing that output then it, it's sort of like might as well not do it mm -hmm. but i have hope i have hope that things eventually get better i think if a space gets overly saturated then like we're then forced to then like properly nitpick like okay 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 but for now i think it's just going up what an amazing individual artist and storyteller it's been such an honor to see you to meet you to talk with you Munye, and to understand exactly why you cherish you know your language vendor and not just the language but just the art and just using art to tell stories i love that you're such a storyteller like even looking at you it's kind of like I see a story. So you are so amazing. And I'm so thankful for having to speak to you. How, um, how do you feel about the interview? What do you want to tell the people who are listening, you know, who are fans of yours or who haven't known about you, but they just discovered you today? Well, firstly, thank you for having me. And, you know, to everybody watching, uh, thanks for supporting. Thanks for loving the art. And, yeah, keep doing it. Thank you. Asante Sana. Guys, it's a wrap right here at VIP Access. I'm here in Josie with Munye, such an amazing performer, artist. Please go on to every social media platform and all the digital streaming platforms and listen to his album, Makulu. And the other recent album is called? For the Boys I Like. Oh, that's the name of the album. I thought it was a song. Okay. <laughs> so for the boys, I like is also out there. It's been such an honor and a pleasure to speak to him. I will be back next week with yet another amazing artist. This is VIP Access. Remember, I'm always taking you behind the scenes to meet the superstars you love, the storytellers, and they're telling us the journey to becoming who they are today and how they manage to be as successful as they are. Thank you for listening. Thank you for watching. Let's meet right here next week again bye bye <laughs> bye bye vip access vip access with aniko and africa loud